Hey yo, Spaghetto here, and welcome back to National Park Wham! And today we're going to be doing episode 2. It recently came out in October, and I just heard about that, and I am so excited to be playing it. This has been one of my favorite visual novels I had the blessing of playing. And it's done by the same artist that did DLC, that did DDLC if you guys didn't know that. I said it in my original playthrough, and I'm so excited to see all the new stuff that they have brought forward. So let's just jump into episode 2 with our legs. All right, select episode. Oh, I can't wait, I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited. Crack. The sound whips through the air. But from what and who? I look around, but I don't remember telling myself to turn my head like I'm, tra like I'm a trapped observer in my own body. There are people crowded around me and gasping. There are trees, a lot of clearing of them. In fact, a few of them are even lined up in a row. All of them are dripping. Not with sap, not with water, or dew, not as nature intended. It drips with fresh green paint. It bleeds into the park. I look at the first tree and there's a tail. From where I'm standing, it looks like it connects to the next tree in the row. A long serpent-like body painted through it. This goes on for so long, for too long. Each tree dripping paint down to the soil and tubing its roots. Then finally, at the last tree, there's a head of a dragon. It's wearing a baseball cap and smoking a blunt. But I know it's a blunt because the smoke is a lighter shade of green. Hey, drug bad, dragon good. Smoke that surrounds me, smoke that becomes fog. Eve, what are you doing? What's going on, Jesse? A voice springs out of the fog. I recognize it. Her. Jesse. Why does the why does she sound scared? Why does she sound shocked? Why does she sound furious? Teaching him a lesson! What? Did I? Is that what I did? What did I do? On the ground there's a man withering in the dirt, sobbing into a patch of grass. He's covering his mouth, his nose, blood seeps through his fingers, blood seeps into the dirt. Oh, this is why Eve got sent to the cabin! Oh shoot! <laughs> That's a swear, but man, if little old Eve could break your jaw, then what a loser. <laughs> then again, I don't underestimate Eve, because Eve's scary, okay. His voice is muffled. The words tumble out in a panic. Yeah? Well, your f***ing neck is next. Whoa, that's a big swear. <laughs> oh my gosh. Don't you take another step. My hand, I assume it's my hand, is balled it up into a fist. Blood speckles the knuckles. I open it up and stare at my palm. So, what was the crack? Oh god, it hurts. This is assault, you I'll, I'll press charges. Sue you in this entire park. Man, this is a mess. Oh. Crack was the sound his face made, and my fist hit it. How about I work those charges up to murder then? Eve? Calm your ankles, okay? I normally agree with you, but this is a bit much. He reels back, raising his hand to shield himself. The green paint staining his hands begins to mix with the blood. I start I start to stomp over to him. Stomp, stomp. Stop, stop. Stop! You've gone too far this time, Eve. Not far enough. Not until he's learned some respect. Stop. Jesse tackles me from behind, restraining me with a full Nelson. Get off of me! Please stop. Eve, please calm down. I'm so uncomfortable. Calm down, Eve. All you're doing is incriminating yourself. Now stand down! No! I don't care anymore! I elbow Jessie in her gut, struggling to break free, but her grip is like a locked chain. Someone stop her. This is an order, Adams! Someone stop me. Eve! Stop. Eve! Stop! I shoot up in bed, sweat sticks to my pajamas, breath uh, trickles into my suffocated lungs as I gasp desperately for air. A pair of arms wrap around my chest like a constrictive rope. <laughs> Is that Yellowstone? Is that Yellowstone? Because if so, that's adorable. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. 
do you look at this do you see that look at how cute that is okay man eve looks so upset though i feel so bad for her uh constantly just people disrespecting the park and everything and to the point where she snaps like that that's just oh my gosh with a few grunts i wiggle onto my side my cheek rolls into a shallow pool of drool as I'm confronted with Yellowstone's murmuring face and buffalo print pajamas. Yep, it's her. Administration. It's got a flip. Yeah. Fries and malts. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Snuggling up to me, she squeezes me tighter. I think I prefer Jesse putting me in, t in a submission hold. Oh, that's hot. I should put in a request for a door. Yellowstone gives an unconscious grunt, then snores into the fabric of my shirt. Scratch that. I should put up a request for a door with a lock. I fall back onto my pillow. The faded morning light glitters through the window, anchoring me to the present, where my worst mistakes are behind me, just over my shoulder, but still behind me. The mini volcano protruding from Yellowstone's head puffs out of light dots of smoke, matching the rhythm of her breath. I follow the smoke until it dissipates into a padded ceiling. From there, I count the wooden beams that run across it. There are some nightmares we live, we relive every day. Oh, that's it. I'm switching to decaf before bed. Yeah, that'd probably be helpful. Studio Coattails presents Achievement Unlocked Bedhead. Woo! Another achievement! Yay! Ooh. In, approach, in an association with Sky Project. Sky Project has some darn good visual novels. National Park Whammon is back. Amazing. I somehow managed to look mildly more dead inside than I usually do. I poke at the resting crow's feet that have nested in deep bags beneath my eyes. There's a brief lightning strike of panic, a moment where the blades of mor mortality slap me across the face, but it subsides and I swallow most of my emotion with a yawn. Close one. I'm just tired, but at least I'm not exhausted, not today, and not even yesterday in fact. I slip on my uniform and button my shirt. My badge is pinned to my chest, crooked and clinging to the wrinkled fabric. It might distinguish my authority as a ranger, but in the end, it's just a hunk of metal. People generally get the message once they see the hat and the khakis. Don't forget about the dishes, Yellowstone. Oh goodness, Gracie. It's Yosemite. I'll hop right on it! Yes, hop with it with your legs, Yellowstone. Thank you. Yellowstone! <gasps> Is my oatmeal ready yet? I hope it has raisins. I like those. It's Zion! I forgot how cute she was! Oh my gosh, she's so cute! She's so <laughs> Look at this. We need to protect this. Okay, you see this little angel? She's literally an angel. We must protect. Gosh dang it. Okay. <laughs> she's so cute. Oh, she's so cute. Uh, all the raisins you want, cutie. Just need a sec. I agree with Yellowstone. She is adorable. Yellowstone zips across the cabin, a stack of dishes teetering on her head as she bends to grab the trash and loose clothes. Hunched over the table, Yosemite flips a page in whatever tome she's reading today, her fist glued to her chin, a castle of stacked mugs skirting next to her elbow. Zion sits cr crisscross applesauce on the floor, stroking Pup's coarse fur, his bony frame curled up on his brand new doggy bed. Pup stretches his silent yawn, shaping into a faint howl. Or coyote bed, I guess. I step out of my corner of the cabin right as Yellowstone comes charging past the divider curtains. Our foreheads crack together, skin and stone colliding. Ooh, ow! A rough edge of her volcano scrapes across my forehead. I stumble back, my hands jerk up to soothe the pain, but a leaning tower of dishes slides towards me. Before they shatter before my very eyes, I push against them. Yellowstone's head jolts up to balance the plates. One sticks out like a Jenga piece, otherwise no damage. I breathe out a sigh of relief. Uh, holy smokes! I'm so sorry! I, I was gearing up for laundry and I wasn't thinking and... 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 It's okay, shh, shh, child, it's okay. We still like you, okay? It's okay, <laughs> calm down, okay? <laughs> Yellowstone. I grip her shoulders and cut her off her babbling. It's okay. 
I'm only slightly irritated. See? Eve's always slightly irritated. Everything's fine. Her skin is pale enough to make me think her soul has been sucked from her body. Nuh-uh. No way. I goofed. What if you got cut? Then Yosemite would yell at me and, and I'd need to scrub the blood off before it stains and... and... Uh, oh no. Coffee. Calm down, Yellowstone. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> Panic pumps the color back into her. Oh jeez. Not good. Not good. She curls her hand into a fist and swats her volcano. The dishes wobble over. Stupid, stupid, stupid. And over. Why do I keep screwing things up? And over. This is not hippy skippy! What is that slang? <laughs> English. Now. I forgot to make your coffee, Eve. This is almost too exhausting for me to deal with. I might even laugh if it didn't look like her heart was about to swan dive out of her chest. Is that it? Don't get so worked up. I can do it myself. Yes. You see, Eve is a strong, independent whammon. She can make coffee. It's okay, Yellowstone. R really? You're not going to give me a knuckle sandwich? Because I'd give me a knuckle sandwich. It's, Eve's kind of scary, I have to admit. She raises her fist to clonk herself over the head again. Yosemite glances up, more interested in poli polishing off the page she's on than anything around her. Hey, quit it. Jeez, I'm sorry, yo's might. She stuffs her nose back into her book. And don't forget about the laundry. Okay, Yosemite. Good to know. Does anybody besides Yellowstone do any chores around here? Concerned Zion whips around to look at us. For at least the 20th time this week, I find myself wondering how such a small girl can hold such uh, hold so much panic. Please don't hurt yourself. It makes me sad. Stop hurting yourself right now. We don't want Zion sad. Okay, this is where I draw the mother heckin' line. She doesn't hit herself, but everything else they said must have gotten drowned out. Yellowstone's eyes swim in their sockets, landing on random corners of the room like something is about to leap out and eat her. You, uh... You holding up okay? Her eyes flutter and then focus on me. She grins and shoots me a thumbs up, proof enough for me that she never hopped off her usual non-stop sugar rush. Yep, just dandy. That's just a little sore from when you shoved me out of bed. <laughs> I slot past her, pushing out one last yawn as I start for the kitchen. Stay out of my bed. I'm not the cuddling type. But your bed is so soft and cozy! Just like you, doll face! <laughs> I'm not sure which one I should feel first. My eye twitching or my cheeks burning. It's all made worse by Yosemite snickering behind the safety of her book, The Coward. Can it, before I pour coffee in your head. What's the matter? Big bad ranger gaining a little weight? <laughs> Does she not have abs of steel? No, but she has fists of them. The scariest thing about that threat is how stale it's gotten. <laughs> I huff towards the sink and ignore her, choosing to fill up the uh, percolator, percolator instead. Sorry, I don't drink coffee, so I don't much know much about the terms. It's not my fault. Yellowstone uses a stick of butter in all of her cooking. Say, do you care if I rake up all your dirty clothes? It's laundry day! Laundry? <laughs> what a novel concept. Yosemite mumbles loud enough for the point to get across. Yellowstone's smile fades and her gaze droops down. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. With pleasure! She, sing she slings behind the corners. Zion watches intently, observing Yellowstone as she gathers up my clothes. With Zion's attention drawn away, and in desperate need for more morning pets, Pop hops out of his bed and braves the world. He buries his snout in my legs. <laughs> I let the percolate, the percolator, fill up with water and bend over and scratch his ears. He leans in, grunting in ecstasy, his ears flopping up and down like a flag in the wind. If clocking some dumb person in the face gets me a suspension and banished here, then I can only imagine what Jessie would do if she found out I wasn't just feeding Pup, but housing him as well. I crank on the stove and pour in the coffee grounds. I gaze out the window, waiting for the coffee to boil. 
across the road, and past the field, I spot the butt end of a mo motorhome big enough for me to know someone is compensating for something. Even when muffled by a wall of trees, their argument carries across the clearing. Today's idiot. <laughs> oh boy, he said Shannon. A man. Wow, okay. Today's other idiot. A whammon. Wow. Shannon, stop being just like your mother. Definitely married. Those germ shacks are publicly funded miracles. Do I willing, ungrateful person? <laughs> Just listen to them, pup. His ears perk up and his head tilts. I think he's listening to me instead. He looks at me instead. They'd rather sleep in a tin can than a tent. How do you mess up camping that bad? Hey, I like sleeping in an RV, okay? It's it's nicer and there's no bugs, all right. Oh. Ah woo! Pup paws at my leg. A desperate plea for pets? Absolutely, but I have a desperate need for validation, so I think this is a reasonable trade-off. Idiots. The hookup is at the campground. How much longer do you think it'll be until they decide to dump the septic tank? I think a better question is how much longer you're going to use your nihilism as a security blanket. Yosemite, I am not in the mood for your sass, so take your sassafras back to the bedroom. Until they're all dead. Ah oh, yes, death, my favorite. I have seven billion pieces of bad news for you, and you're one of them. What is your problem? I like hugged you in the last episode, and you're still a frosted tipped biscuit. Coffee boils over the spout and dribbles down the percolator. I twist off the stove and I bring my boiling pot of sunshine over to the table. Keep patronizing. If a tiny forest fire makes you come down with a fever, I can't wait to find out how bad you smell when Mr. and Mrs. Crisis Counseling decide trash cans are too complicated. <laughs> oh, God. Ooh. I reach for the dirty mug balancing on top of the five others. Like I've done thousands of mornings before, I pour the still simmering coffee. Just what do you think you're doing? I tip the percolator back, three drips already speckling the cup. Pouring coffee... into a dirty cup? Ugh. Yeah, that hurts. Yuck. I glance back at the mug. A faint ring of yellow tea residue circles around the middle. Uh, looks fine to me. Ah, oh, god, Eve. No. Ugh. Oh. Yosemite's ears flatten. But I... Just drink out of it. Indirect kiss. Indirect kiss. I ship it. I'm not skipping my morning coffee because of your slobber. <laughs> <laughs> I pour the rest of it until it nearly slops over the edge of the cup. Keeping my eyes locked with the Yosemite's, I take the first sip. I can't believe you! You are so gross! Uh, I, I'm gonna side with Yosemite on this one. Aren't you the one who uses the same tea bag over and over because you don't want to be wasteful? Yeah, but that's different. That's also pretty freaking gross. Y'all are nasty, okay? What the heck? You guys are nasty. Yosemite caresses her forehead. A pink glow gradients her cheeks. What if I get your germs, huh? We can't just go swapping saliva like that, you know? Okay. I... I think you have your information mixed up. Yosemite gives a tired sigh. Any hint of embarrassment has been replaced by exhausted certainty. What are you talking about? Of course I don't. Everyone knows germs are exchanged between both parties whenever body fluids come into contact. I think the only germ any of us need to worry about catching is your ego. Oh, man. Mm. I wonder if she just feels obligated to know more than everyone else, even when she's wrong. Like, being smart is her cross to bear. 
Even if she's a smart aleck and know-it-all, I've come to not like but appreciate Yosemite. Yeah, that works. I appreciate Yosemite. Yeah, I mean, me too. A woo. So, how long do you plan on letting the breeding pair struggle out there before helping? <laughs> the breeding pair. <laughs> uh... Until they go away, or my shift starts. Whichever comes first. We glance at the window. The yelling continues, blending in with the chirps of the morning birds. Isn't teaching these people how to not mess these things up your, I don't know, job? Maybe. I rip open two packets of sweetener I find buried beneath Yosemite's research. She gives me a dirty look for digging around her crap, but I just ignore her and pour them into my coffee. I signed up to protect and preserve. It's not my job to teach these people. Especially when they care so little about the parks, they couldn't even be bothered to do a little research. Correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm not. But weren't you the one who sent those kids to a fire safety course after that incident a few weeks back? But I'm not the one teaching that course, am I? So you're just going to let them keep making mistakes? Don't make it sound so innocent. It's ignorance, plain and simple. You can't teach people to appreciate the things they have. They either already do, or they learn it on their own. If they can't, that person is just defective. And take a wild guess at which one most people are. How come you're defending them anyway? What happened to your lectures about the dangers of humanity? Uh, I wiggle my fingers like a ghostly specter. Then throw back a couple gulps of coffee. They were never lectures on the dangers of humanity. They were lectures on complacency. Real ignorance. Particularly in relation to people in power. Like rangers. I love power rangers. You say you're sick of cleaning up people's messes. Then teach them how to avoid making them to begin with. Or do you not want to protect and preserve? Mm, you two act like you're already married. Oh my gosh. A smirk creeps from the corner of her mouth, smug and irritating, but her eyes are narrowed, stern and genuine. God, I hate it when she has a point. No one should be allowed to be as smarmy as you, you know that? Yet here I am. Yeah, but can you disappear? You're just upset because I'm onto something. What you're on is a tangent. I swipe away the book resting beneath their arms, mostly because I know that if I don't have a verbal thrashings are going to wear down any argument I have, and my ego just can't handle that today. And what is it even that you're educating yourself with? I read the title of the sleek paperback cover, dog ears bending from the corners and the sides of multiple read-throughs. It feels like the pages might fall out of it if I give it a good enough shake. The Human Mind, God and Architect, by Dr. Angela Merrick. Sounds like some New Age trash to me. <laughs> oh, jeez. Give that back! It's valuable research! Give that back! Well, too bad, frosted-tipped hippie. She wrenches it from my hand before I can even get the chance to comply, then cradles it close to her chest. I raise a very doubtful eyebrow. Dr. Merrick was a road paver who time just hasn't caught up with yet. My eyebrows had muscles. They'd be getting an intense workout. She argued that the human consciousness, or rather, the collective consciousness of mankind, was powerful enough to create. She says this like it's common knowledge, and I mean, maybe it is to crazy people. Create what? Anything! Things, places, maybe even entire worlds. All without ever even knowing it. All that energy needs to go somewhere, right? Oh, Jesus. Uh-huh. And what evidence is all this based off? Now I'm gonna side with Eve. <laughs> Her own eyewitness accounts and analysis. Even though she was blind. Wow, okay, case closed. Moving forward. Oh, honey. <laughs> Oh, honey. <laughs> How did she write? Uh. What? 
You got suckered. <laughs> I did not. Uh, honey, yeah, you did. So hard. Shut up. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I love it when blind people write my favorite novels. Sure. You've already said more than enough. It all sounds like... 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 Uh... Hogwash? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Yellowstone! See? She's got it. Yellowstone, be quiet. I'm trying to open Eve's puny mind. I breathe in, ready to take another stab at her. A sharp one when Yellowstone gets the first word in before me. Well... Actually, I was wondering if I could start rinsing off dishes. She twiddles her fingers together, shifting her eyes to the ground away from Yosemite's hawkish stare. I think she may actually be scared of her. About time. Alright, take them two at a time. I don't want to see any of them break. Like someone's scope of thought. Why are you so interested in what a quack has to say anyway? Two by two, Yellowstone takes the mugs by the handles. Resting them in a bed of bubbly water, floating this, flooding the sink. Because that quack gave me a theory. A game theory. What kind of theory? Like, involving your research? I lean in closer, my voice dropping to a hushed whisper. Even though there's no secret to be kept. Even though I really couldn't care much less than I do already. And that's not much at all. It's just a small amount, really. About... Where you three might have come from? Something to that effect. Let's consider, just for a moment, that if enough people feel strongly about something, then they really do create some kind of... I don't know... physical embodiment of it? Doubtful, but I'll suspend my disbelief. So wouldn't it stand to some kind of reason that since strong feelings, and as a result, cultural perceptions, shift with time, the physical results of it would change, too. What are you getting at? Her face is flushed again. I wonder if this is her first time saying all this out loud. Does she even hear how ridiculous it all sounds? What if those physical results are... us? My spine tingles, the realization that these girls are something different, re-emerging from the first time in days. I'm practically with them all the time now, so I've gotten used to it. But the idea that they're not flesh and blood like me, but flesh, blood, stone, feathers, and volcanic rock too, it makes this truce we have seem utterly ridiculous. I'm playing house with three fairies, sprites, ghosts. Apologies, ma'am. I wasn't aware it was against my protocol to house fairy tale creature, fairy tale creatures in our posts. But don't they? <laughs> But don't they dang near look like real girls, though? <laughs> so, what? You think Zion here is gonna go through park puberty in a couple of years? Maybe sprout up by two feet? Zion blinks, glances back and forth, and then points to herself as to confirm, yes, we are really talking about the same Zion. Yosemite scoots back in her chair, eyes wide and distant, like I just plucked at a nerve. When her ears flatten, I could tell the conversation has hit its wall. Puberty would be more forgiving. Yellowstone comes back around for the last mug. Done with your coffee? It's cool if you aren't, but if you are, then can I nab it? I mean, as long as I'm not rushing you to choke it down, but if it's cool beans, then... Go ahead. It's cold now, but you can drink whatever's left in the cup. Yellowstone's bouncing bounces nervously. The kind of shaking I get when I go a day without coffee. It's like her personality has been flipped on its head. She still has boundless energy, but now it's all neurotic and buzzed up. I hand the cup of I hand the cup off to Yellowstone. She brings them up to the mug to her lips, tilting it back. Stop drinking out of the same cup! Will you calm your chest, Yosemite? God! Yosemite dives across the table. She slams down in front of me. Her hand stops just short of the mug. Yellowstone jumps. Stirred by the crack of Yosemite flopping on the table, the mug falls and shatters. Pup's ears rise to attention. There's a quick sliver of silence as we stare at the broken pieces of ceramic. Go get ceramic. the dustpan, Yellowstone. 
Static cra crackles over the radio. The familiar chirp of Jesse's voice is, brought, is bright enough for me to want to draw the curtains on in, on it. Up and at him, Ranger. The forest doesn't sleep, and neither do we. She drones on, but all our attention has turned to Yellowstone. Her eyes draw down. Puffs of smoke blow out of the air above her, rising from her head like a stack of exhaust. Her fists clench together. I hear them crack. Her arms tense until they shake. I'll get it later. A stiff whisper, quiet enough for me to be unsure if I even heard it right. Yellowstone zaps out of sight, a gust of wind and twirls around us, tossing loose papers from the table. Then there's just empty space. Wakey, wakey! Eggs and potential disciplinary action, ease! Okay, so, um, the first line Jesse said on the radio, it, the audio didn't play. I'm wondering if that's a bug or not. If not, then I don't know. I think it's a bug because every single time a character said a line out loud, it's been audible from their voice actor, so I think that's just a, a small bug. Zion looks up looks up to Yosemite, concern swimming her, in her eyes. What's wrong with Yellowstone? She's not acting like herself. She's fine. Don't be pulled in by the theatrics. She's just being a brat. You know what? Maybe she's sick of you, Yosemite, because you're kind of grating after a while, you know that? Yosemite goes back to reading, occasionally grumbling. And that's where I'm going to end this episode, guys. If you'd like to see more of this, let me know. I really enjoy this game, so thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Comment down below what you thought of this video. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Stay safe, guys.